Today we're going to look at twisted pair network cabling. Uh, you'll hear terms like uh, CAT5 or CAT5E. So we're first going to look at twisted pair cabling, sort of see what it is. If you haven't seen twisted pair uh, cabling or if you haven't taken the jacket off, you'll notice that uh, uh, for most network wire that we're going to use, there are four uh, pairs of wires, so eight conductors that are twisted together. And the standard colors are brown, orange, blue, and green. And although in here it looks like it's a white color, this is actually um, white with a blue stripe. Over here would be white with an orange stripe, uh, white with a brown stripe, and white with a green stripe here. Network cables come in uh, different types of copper in the middle. You'll find that they're solid copper. So you have a single uh, conductor that's uh, solid and quite thick. And you'll have stranded. And they're used in different situations. So the stranded uh, is used where the, con the conductor needs to be uh, very flexible, like in patch cords. Uh, solid wire is used uh, for uh, installing a, a run in behind a, a drywall over ceilings. So the longest um, sort of part of your network uh, connection or infrastructure through a building is all using solid. Uh, strand it's only used in the patch cords that connect up a computer to a device. There are also a couple grades of this outer sheathing here. One common thing, uh, common material they use is PVC. It's a type of plastic and it's relatively cheap. And uh, you can also get something which is a little more fire retardant. It's called plenum grade. And a plenum is a uh, sort of a ductwork which is often overhead. So if you have any network cabling which needs to be run overhead and uh, uh, in ductwork, then you need to install a plenum grade cable, which is more expensive. But if you're just running it um, through a wall or uh, uh, not overhead, you can use a cheaper PVC uh, style of jacket. There's a, a bunch of different standards that you'll see for network cabling. You'll see terms like CAT, which stands for category, 5. You'll see 5E and you'll see 6 and there are some standards of 6, 6A which is out. Um, but these are the three major standards which we're going to talk about here. So category 5 not used too much anymore um, could provide a, a bandwidth of 100 megabits per second. Most people today and this is uh, November 2012 are using and installing Category 5E. And Category 5E can go up to 1 gigabit per second. So they've made improvements in the uh, cabling to allow uh, signals to travel faster. One of the faster standards today is Category 6. And Category 6 can go up to 1,000 megabits per second or one, uh, sorry, 10,000 or 10 gigabits per second. So those are the three standards of cable and you'll find obviously if you ordered a CAT6 cable it would be more expensive than a CAT5E. Plenum grade would be more uh, expensive than a PVC type of jacket. You'll notice some things in the cable. This is a little um, strand of, uh, I believe it may be aramid, which is uh, Kevlar. It's very strong. It gives it some strength. But this little cord here is also, I think it's called a rip cord, will allow you actually to rip the jacket easily if you need to. Uh, this is used when you're stripping the cable. Once you're terminating the cable and you've sort of stripped this away, you just normally cut this off. Category 6 has another element inside. It's a spacer. And if I looked at this at the end view, this spacer is designed to keep the conductors separate. And it reduces so your conductors would be spaced uh, apart a little more. And that allows the signal, so I'm looking at the end of the cable down through here. 
So this allows the uh, uh, signals to travel faster as well and this is one of the reasons that CAT6 gets its 10 gigabit per second bandwidth. So let's look at a little more details on twisted pair and why we have twisted pair. So we're going to talk a little bit about transmitters and receivers. In electronics, I may want to send a logic one down a line. We're basically sending binary signals, so we're sending ones and zeros down a cable. Well, those ones and zeros get converted to voltages. So if I look at transmitting this, maybe I'm sending uh, one volt DC down, and if I have a zero, I'm going to send a zero volt. DC down this cable. And at the other end I'm hoping that I receive, this is a receiver, that I'm going to receive my 1 volt or 0 volts DC. Well one thing that happens is that in this system it's called single-ended uh, because it's using a single conductor to uh, send a signal down and basically uh, both ends reference earth ground. We talked about earth ground in our electrical wiring uh, so that they can recognize the one volt. Well usually in a system which uses DC voltages this is a this can't be very long. You're usually talking about 10 to 20 feet before the one volt degrades because of the resistance in the cable. And so your cables are generally very short, and this wouldn't be very appropriate for a network networking installation. So we're going to look at if we did not use a single-ended system, what might we use? And so all network cabling uses a differential, what's called a differential type of system and driver. So what happens there? Well, in a differential signal, you have actually two outputs which are actually driving this cable. So if I were to have a 1, I might have 1 volt uh, driving the top line and a minus 1 volt driving the bottom line. And if I go over to my receiver, The biggest difference in the receiver is that the receiver is going to look at just the difference between the two voltages which are received. So if I have 1 here and minus 1 here, there's a difference of uh, 2 volts, 1 minus a minus 1, which is going to give me 2 volts. And so that difference will, um, will translate to a 1 being transmitted down. Let's suppose I'm transmitting a 0 here in a zero the voltages would be flipped so I would have a minus one here a one volt there and at the other end a minus one and one I would have a minus two volts difference which would translate to a zero well how does this help uh, give us longer uh, distances well if we went back to the single-ended system one of the problems in the single-ended system is what happens if there's some noise. So I've got one volt traveling down and all of a sudden um, we're going by some electrical outlet or maybe a motor turns on and all of a sudden a 50 volt pulse is injected into that signal and all of a sudden boom down here I've got 51 volts because I've got one volt um, on top of the 50 volts that was induced and this receiver can't recover from that because if I send a zero volts down well that's going to be just 50 volts down here and it can't distinguish between a one or a zero so in a single-ended system it's not very it, it can't recover from a noise which is introduced into the system in a differential system here let's look at our example if I induce 50 volts here and we'll look at uh, are one being sent down so I have one and minus one well at the other end then what happens is the one and the 50 means that I'm going to have 51 volts appear at my receiver here uh, and 49 uh, appear on this conductor but again the difference of these two is still two volts and so this receiver properly um, decodes that voltage uh, to be a logic one 
So twisted pair is really resistant uh, to electrical interference and that's one of the reasons it's used. These two twists are uh, very close together. Uh, this allows the cable to actually run very far. In fact, you can generally with most networking cables run uh, 100 meters. It's over 300 feet uh, without any problem whatsoever. So twisted pair really uh, useful for rejecting noise. We're going to look at some other things that can happen in twisted pair cable. And here uh, is an example down here where we have two cables running uh, together side by side and we have uh, the the black is the center conductor so we have two wires uh, and we're going to talk about something that you may hear a term you may hear called crosstalk now when you have two conductors okay which we have here we have basically two conductors each one's carrying a different signal and you separate it with some material like plastic and plastics actually uh, can be thought of as what's called a dielectric so we have some material in here there's actually an electronic component that gets created here as those two wires uh, travel together and it's a capacitor and one property of a capacitor is that at high frequencies A capacitor acts as a short. Or as a low value resistor. The resistance or impedance is low. And if the resistance or impedance is low between these two conductors, then what happens is there's a little leakage that goes across here. So if I have a signal um, on the orange conductor here, what will happen is a small amount of that uh, gets induced not as high uh, in the other uh, conductor and so that's called crosstalk and crosstalk is a problem in cables so by having twisted pairs as you see here which are separated uh, the crosstalk is reduced because they're physically not close together now another thing that can happen if you miswire a cable, okay, so we'll go back to our um, driver, which is a two-part driver. If you've miswired it, you may have used different pairs. So I've used uh, one conductor for the positive part of my driver, and over here I've used maybe another conductor in another pair. So this is a problem called split pair. and I don't get the benefit of uh, this twisted pair for noise rejection and you will see that this signal let's see if I can get a different type of pin here so base that's a little too big um, so basically I have this uh, conductor is used in this pair and this conductor is used in this pair um, and actually having a split pair electrically it will work that is they're both connected at either end but it has very poor noise immunity and can actually uh, cause real problems because if data is not properly recognized at the other end you get uh, retransmits um, happening from one end to the other uh, one end says, gee, I didn't get that packet, and so it asks for retransmit. And if you have too many retransmits, it can actually bring down, um, bring down your network. So this type of cable can produce a very noisy cable, even though electrically um, the signals are connected up properly. So we talked about uh, category 5, category 5E. What are all the elements that may be in a network connection? Well, you have from your computer, you may have a patch cord going over to your wall outlet and that's usually using stranded cable. 
the stranded patch cord. And then from there, the conduct the uh, cabling will go usually behind a wall, uh, up overhead, and will come down into a patch panel as shown here. And often you might need some plenum grade, and this is solid, uh, solid cable. And you'll again, you'll have another patch cord which will go from here off into a switch or a router and off into your ISP or the internet. Well, when you're using, so if you have and say, well, I want 10 gigabits per second uh, to travel through all those cables, then every element has to be a category six. You have to have a category six outlet. You have to have a category six a patch cable, your cabling, solid cable in the um, in the overhead uh, uh, plenum and in the walls has to be category six. Your patch panel here has to be category six. Uh, and so does this here. So all elements, and your switch has to have the capabilities of 10 gigabits per second. So every element has to uh, make sure that they adhere to that standard. So that was a quick overview of the different categories of cable, why we use twisted pair, uh, and how it can reject noise and allow us to get uh, very high data rates up to 10 gigabits per second.